Hello everyone, welcome back. This is chapter 4. We are talking about labor market equilibrium. My name is Dr. Gerek and I teach economics, professor of economics. So today we are going to put together what we learned in the previous part. If you haven't watched those, uh, go ahead and watch chapter 2 and 3 where we talked about labor supply and labor demand respectively. So we're going to put everything together. Let's get started. This is an exciting chapter. All right, so part one, we will talk about equilibrium in a perfectly competitive labor market. A perfectly labor, uh, competitive labor market is characterized by uh, many workers, many employers in the labor market. So each worker is identical. And also the interesting part is that everybody is paid the same, okay, because they're identical. So there's a nice quote here, order is not pressure which is imposed on society from without, but any equilibrium which is set up from within. So order comes from equilibrium. All right, so introduction. Uh, we talked about this in chapter one. Workers, they work more when, uh, chapter one, two, and three. Uh, workers work more when wages are higher, more hours, they supply their labor more. Employers hire more uh, employment hours when pay is lower. So two sides interact to generate the labor market equilibrium. So they, it sounds like they have conflicting desires, but it really is not. Labor market equilibrium coordinates the uh, wants and needs of companies and also the um, labor supply of the workers. Desires of firms and workers determining the wage and employment observed in the labor market. So let's talk about market types. Uh, we have perfectly competitive market. We also have monopsony. So monopsony means like in a locality, there's only one employer. Okay, so that's interesting. Imagine like a super small town. There's a military base and the military base is literally the only employer and no cafes, no, no other businesses in town, kind of, right? So monopsony compared to more uh, competitive markets, I'm not talking about perfectly competitive that's one extreme monopsony is the other extreme but monopsony usually hires fewer people and pays less compared to more competitive labor markets let's get started with perfectly competitive labor markets so in competitive equilibrium uh, we are going to see supply and demand curves intersecting so you have employment here you have wage rate per hour okay so you have labor demand curve, we derived it, chapter 2, short term and long run. We have labor supply curve, they intersect. This is the equilibrium point. We usually put capital E, but I'm going to put EQM for equilibrium, right? Equilibrium, uh, because when I put E, it can be confusing with this E, employment. Okay, so at this equilibrium point, quantity supplied of labor is exactly equal to quantity demanded of labor, okay? So we call this equilibrium employment level. So market perfectly clears. And this is my dog. This is the equilibrium wage rate. I put a star where the market clearing wage rate. So you see one wage rate, labor market clears, no unemployment or no labor shortage. Okay. So this generates equilibrium wage rate and employment rate. So it is keep this in mind it's unlikely that the labor market is ever in an equilibrium since supply and demand are dynamic so in any at any point of time you can see demand curve shifting to the right let's say new tesla factory moves in town okay so the equilibrium moves here from let's call this a to b i just made that up or supply curve could be shifting so you could be moving to a new equilibrium with higher wages and higher employment Okay, the model suggests that the market is always moving toward equilibrium. So keep that in mind. So I'll see you in part two where we talk about economic efficiency, Pareto efficiency, first welfare theorem and economics. And we will learn about workers uh, supply surplus and firm surplus. See you in part two.